I'd like to welcome everyone to part one of our PowerPoint slide presentation. Part one is titled Ellen White, Daniel and the Revelation and the Eastern Question. We will be going according to Isaiah 820 as we go through this study. This is something you truly do not want to miss. Um, be sure to invite, share the link with all your Seventh-day Adventist friends and family. Before you continue on, be sure to get your Bible and look every verse up that is referred to in this presentation. Also, any spirit of prophecy quote that is referred to, you may look them up in the books mentioned if you have them. Or you can get the Ellen G. White comprehensive CD-ROM. You just want to make sure that it contains the Pioneer writings as well. You can either contact your local ABC store and if you don't know if they're what is the closest one you can do a Google search or you can contact the Ellen White estate located in Maryland and if you don't want to do that you can go to egwwritings.org and in the top left hand you will see two search bars the first search bar at the very top is the one you'll do your word search in, but make sure you enclose it with quotation marks, or you can look it up according to the title of the books. Now let's go on to our presentation for today. In Revelation 12:17, we are told the following, And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus. We know the dragon represents Satan. You can read that in Revelation 12, verse, I believe it is 9. And the woman represents the church. So he goes to make war with the remnant of her seed, and they have two characteristics. They keep the commandments of God, which includes the Sabbath, but they also have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So God's people not only keep the Sabbath and uplift his Ten Commandments, okay, but they have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 19.10 tells us, And I fell at his feet to worship him. He said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So, God's church not only keeps the Sabbath, okay, but they have the gift of prophecy, the prophetic gift, the spirit of prophecy, which is none other than the testimony of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 8.20 To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. We should speak in accordance to God's word and according to the testimony of Jesus, which is none other than the spirit of prophecy. The enemy has made his masterly efforts to unsettle the faith of our own people in the testimonies. And when these errors come in, they claim to prove all the positions by the Bible. But they misinterpret the scriptures. They misapply the prophecies and the scriptures to prove falsehood. And after men have done their work in weakening the confidence of our churches in the testimonies, they have torn away the barrier that unbelief in the truth shall become widespread and there is no voice to be lifted up to stay the force of error. Three Selected Messages, page 83, paragraph 3. 
How does Satan make his masterly efforts to unsettle the faith of our people? They claim to use Bible and Bible only, making it appear as if the testimony of Jesus is not the Word of God. And they refuse to look at what the testimonies have to say, and then they misinterpret the scriptures. They misapply the prophecies to prove falsehood. And so by doing this, they're weakening the confidence in the testimonies. And what that's actually doing is taking away the barrier. And that, and also, not it's not only called the barrier, but it's the voice that is to be lifted up to stay the force of error. So if you have one group saying, if you have three different groups teaching on one particular topic, and they all three come up with different conclusions and they all claim to come from the Bible the spirit of prophecy gives us the final say so men may get up scheme after scheme and the enemy will seek to seduce souls from the truth but all who believe that the Lord has spoken through sister white and has given her a message will be saved from the many delusions that will come in these last days Brothers and sisters, there's a lot of delusions coming within Adventism. And the only way to really know the truth from error is to look at what the Spirit of Prophecy has to say. That was given to us for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Brother Jay would confuse the mind by seeking to make it appear that the light God has given through the testimonies is an addition to the Word of God. But in this he presents the matter in a false light. God has seen fit in this manner to bring the minds of his people to his Word to give them a clear understanding of it. Brothers and sisters, the spirit of prophecy, the testimony of Jesus, is not an addition to the Word of God. It is the Word of God. It's Christ testimony. Ellen White is only the scribe. She's just like Paul and Peter and Moses and the Bible writers. Um, it's not her words. She's writing what was given to her to write. Unfortunately, many of our people within our churches have made it appear as if it is an addition to the Word of God. But actually the testimonies gives us a clearer understanding of the Word of God. It makes it very clear what the Word of God already has to say. Sister White is not the originator of these books. They contain the instruction that during her life work God has been giving her. They contain the precious comforting light that God has graciously given his servant. Cole Porter Ministry, page 125, paragraph 1. So, it, we're told in um, Third Selected Messages, I believe it is, that the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy. This is not, Sister White's not the originator of these books. She only wrote down what God had given to her. How are we to study our messages and search the scriptures? We're counseled besides the instruction in his word. The Lord has given special testimonies to his people, not as a new revelation, but that he may set before us the plain lessons of his word, that errors may be corrected, that the right way may be pointed out, that every soul may be without excuse. Three Selected Messages, page 31, paragraph 3. What does besides the instruction in his word mean? That word besides means there is something else that God has given to us to study, and that is the testimonies. And these special testimonies given to us are not new as to what the word has to say, but it was given to us to make clear what's already written in the Word of God. And why? So that errors may be corrected. Errors that we may have in our understanding or way of thinking 
and interpreting the scriptures and that the right way may be pointed out so that we can be on the right path and every soul is without excuse okay the spirit of prophecy makes it so clear that every soul is without excuse how else are we to study the scriptures we're told to search the scriptures with the aid of our publications you can form a Bible class and search the scriptures for yourselves with the aid of our publications and in this way learn much of present truth all should be making the most of the opportunities granted them to become intelligent in the scriptures councils to writers and editors page 112 paragraph 1 brothers and sisters we're counseled when we come together to study and we're forming a Bible class we're to use to study the scriptures with the aid of our publications and by studying this way we will learn much of present truth and we're counseled all should be making the most of opportunities granted them to become intelligent in the scriptures in other ways use our publications so you can know what has been given to us as to what is truth and what is not our publications equal our books and periodicals the world is to receive the light of truth through an evangelizing ministry of the word in our books and periodicals our publications are to show that the end of all things is at hand christian service page 146 paragraph 1 our publications include our books and periodicals our books referring to the spirit of prophecy and the testimonies and in a little bit we'll be learning about what the periodicals are our periodicals equal our pioneer writings God has given me light regarding our periodicals what is it he has said that the dead are to speak how their work shall follow them we are to repeat the words of the pioneers in our work who knew what it cost to search for the truth as for hidden treasure and who labored to lay the foundation of our work they moved forward step by step under the influence of the Spirit of God one by one these pioneers are passing away the word given me is let that which these men have written in the past be reproduced councils to writers and editors page 28 paragraph 1 so brothers and sisters our periodicals are the writings of the pioneers and we'll be learning which pioneer specifically regarding this topic this subject that we're going over right now this includes the writings of Stephen Haskell not long ago I took up a copy of the Bible echo as I looked it through I saw an article by Elder Haskell as I laid the paper down I said these articles must be reproduced there is truth and power in them men spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit so according to the testimony of Jesus we're counseled that that which Haskell wrote he was moved by the Holy Spirit as he was writing about four years ago when elder Haskell and others were conducting a Bible training school and evening services in New York City the word of the Lord to the workers there was let the believers living near the place where you are holding meetings share the burden of the work God is pleased by efforts to set them at work he desires every church member to labor as his helping hand she wrote this oh and that's evangelism 111 paragraph 2 she wrote this in 1906 so about four years ago would take us to around 1902 in New York City Stephen Haskell along with his wife were conducting what was called the Bible training school 
and sister white says god was endorsing that which he was training there and that he was to receive help and laborers to spread the, spread the truth that he was spreading there what other writings are we counseled to read especially should the book daniel and the revelation be brought before the people as a very book for this time this book contains the message which all need to read and understand it will be a power to enlighten the world by reading it many souls have come to a knowledge of the truth first manuscript release page 60 paragraph 6 if you notice in this quote she starts off with the word especially so she's giving importance to this book Daniel and the Revelation by Uriah Smith and she says it is the book to be brought before the people as the very book for this time she says it contains the message all need to read and understand and that it will be a power to enlighten the world many souls have come to the truth to a knowledge of the truth by reading this book alone the Lord has shown me that this book referring to Uriah's book Daniel the Revelation will do a good work in enlightening those who become interested in the truth for this time those who embrace the truth now who have not shared in the experiences of those who entered the work in the early history of the message should study the instruction given in Daniel and the Revelation becoming familiar with the truth it presents those who are alive today were not there in the beginning and in the early history of the work therefore through the testimony of Jesus we are instructed that every one of us is to read this book now this particular book Daniel and the Revelation it came out in 1897 thoughts on Daniel and the Revelation came out around 1883 and there was another one I believe in 1885 that was cumulative thoughts of other writers besides Uriah Smith but between 1883 and 1897 14 years had passed and many more events had taken place so this was the updated version that the prophet had endorsed that Christ through the prophet endorses not just the prophet but it, remember it's the testimony of Jesus those who are preparing to enter the ministry who desire to become successful students of the prophecies will find Daniel and the Revelation an invaluable help they need to understand this book it speaks of past present and future laying out the past so plainly that none need err therein those who will diligently study this book will have no relish for the cheap sentiments presented by those who have a burning desire to get out something new and strange to present to the flock of God the great essential questions which God would have presented to the people are found in Daniel and the Revelation there is found solid eternal truth for this time everyone needs the light and information it contains first selected messages page 61 paragraph 2 brothers and sisters if you want to become a successful student of the prophecies Daniel and the revelation is an invaluable help and when I say this the prophet knew exactly what she was writing because Christ gave it to her and as I've studied the whole section on Daniel in this book I have an understanding of the book of Daniel like I've never had before and I am able to explain it very clearly and very plainly we're counseled that all need to understand this book okay that this book lays out the path so plainly that none need err therein you don't have to worry about erring with this book and does it have some minor mistakes yes and we'll be talking about what the prophet says regarding that but it's not mistakes 
of a salvational nature that you need to worry about. Some of the unimportant dates are off maybe by one year and as you read it you'll see um, but it's not anything that's of a salvational nature. If you diligently study this book you're not going to have relish for any cheap sentiments um, presented by those who have a burning desire to bring out something new. And brothers and sisters there's a lot of new things being brought out contrary to what Uriah Smith wrote in this book. Now she says the great essential questions which God would have presented to the people are found in this particular book Daniel and the Revelation. We'll be covering one of those very essential questions in the near future. There is found solid eternal truth for this time not error but truth and everyone needs the light and information it contains. So that includes myself and everyone listening to this PowerPoint at this moment. The interest in Daniel and the Revelation is to continue as long as probationary time shall last. God used the author of this book as a channel through which to communicate light to direct minds to the truth. Shall we not appreciate this light which points us to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, our King. So, according to Jesus, through the prophet, the interest in this particular book, Daniel the Revelation, 1897 edition, is to continue as long as probationary time lasts. God used the author of this book, who is none other than Uriah Smith, as a channel through which to communicate light to direct minds to the truth and we are counseled to appreciate this light which points us to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ our King. So this book points us to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and when we get to those particular topics on the coming of Christ and what the sign of his coming is we are counseled that Uriah Smith does it very plainly and clearly. That's first manuscript release, page 63, paragraph 1. Satan hates this book. There are those saying all these quotes that I've been reading to you from manuscript release, volume 1, are from Willie White. But these are all from the prophet. The Lord showed Sister White that her son Willie would do right by her book work after she passed. First Selected Messages, page 54, paragraph 3 to 55, paragraph 2, and also 21 Manuscript Release, page 141 to 142. Brothers and sisters, there's such a hatred against this book that there are people saying that Willie White wrote all these quotes and you can't trust this in the spirit of prophecy and you can't trust that. Brothers and sisters, beware of those people because we're counseled no one is to go into the writings of the prophet and say this is inspired and this is not. We have a promise that her writings would be preserved to the very end. Okay? Have attempts been made to change? Yes, they have. But her writings have been preserved. And there's also uh, people saying we're not to read this book of Uriah Smith because he went into apostasy and they show you several quotes where he rejected righteousness by faith message from A.T. Jones and E.J. Wagner and he went against the spirit of prophecy, the testimonies from Ellen White and that is correct. He did do this for a couple years but by 1897 he had repented and gone back and if I remember to do so I will give you the quotes where she talks about in 1901 or 2 it was where he was second as the editor of Review and Herald and she said he should be first and that when he became first again she was so excited and she said if he can no longer write 
his sons were to do so for him at his dictation now that was right before he died he died in 1902 in 1888 in the 1888 materials if you go to pages 714 to 716 you will see in 1888 when he was rising against the messages of Jones and Wagner the prophet said that Uriah Smith was causing a major mess because he had a very high position within the church and he was leading people astray and she said he should not have this position but yet years later she says he should have the highest position as editor of the review and herald and should continue to write articles Uriah Smith had repented and became a believer in the testimonies of Jesus he became a believer in the visions and messages of Ellen White so yes there was a time where he was against it but brothers and sisters he repented and so we need to look at everything written about Uriah Smith not just bits and pieces because there's such hatred against this book people are using those quotes and saying see look what the prophet said here but they're not giving you a balance showing you what happened up to the end of his life so brothers and sisters be careful of these people beware and please read the book we've been counseled to read let's continue on Satan will seek to divert the minds of those who should be established strengthened and settled in the truths of the first second and third angels messages the students in our schools should carefully study Daniel and the Revelation so that they shall not be left in darkness and the day of Christ overtake them as a thief in the night I speak of this book because it is a means of educating those who need to understand the truth of the word this book should be highly appreciated it covers much of the ground we have been over in our experience councils to writers page 145 paragraph 2 please read that if the youth will study this book Daniel and the Revelation and learn for themselves what is true they will be saved from many perils first manuscript release page 63 paragraph 4 first of all in councils to writers and editors page 145 paragraph 2 we are counseled the following and brothers and sisters this is information that truly needs to be heeded because if we would follow what Christ tells us through the prophet we would be safe from many delusions remember that quote at the beginning okay so in councils to writers and editors page 145 paragraph 2 we are told the record of the experience through which the people of God passed in the early history of our work must be republished many of those who have since come into the truth are ignorant of the way in which the Lord wrought the experience of William Miller and his associates of Captain Joseph Bates and of other pioneers in the Advent message should be kept before our people Elder Loughborough's book should receive attention our leading men should see what can be done for the circulation of this book brothers and sisters there are people who are saying Uriah Smith is not a pioneer of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and they're specifically saying this to attack this book so that they can remove this book from the people so they can continue to teach their errors that they teach regarding this message um, the message will be getting to in parts two and three so she tells us that he is a pioneer of the publishing work although he might not have been around in the very beginning 1840 to 44 he was around when they were first publishing this material and sending it off and he knew what the messages were he understood she says if we want to know the first second and third angels messages we need to be reading this book by Uriah Smith Daniel and the Revelation 
so that we will not be left in darkness and the day of Christ overtake us as a thief in the night. Now, overtaking us as a thief in the night has to do with his second coming. And we learned that she tells us to read this book that leads up to Christ's second coming. Okay? If we don't read this book by Uriah Smith, Christ is going to overtake us as a thief in the night. And when we get to parts two and three, you'll understand how that will be. Especially part three. Okay? She says this book is a means of educating those who need to understand the truth of the word and it should be highly appreciated not just appreciated but highly appreciated okay and if we would study this book we would be saved from many perils the third angel's message is truth and light and power and to present it so that right impressions will be made upon hearts should be the work of our schools as well as of our churches of the teacher as well as of the minister those who accept positions as educators should prize more and more the revealed will of God so plainly and strikingly presented in Daniel and the Revelation are you an evangelist brothers and sisters are you a Sabbath school teacher are you a Bible teacher do you go from door to door teaching the messages? Are you a medical missionary? Are you a co-porter? Are you a minister? All of these people that I just mentioned are called educators. And they should be reading and studying this book. This is what we've been commissioned from Christ through the prophet. And that's Testimonies, Volume 6, page 131, paragraph 1. The people in the world need to know that the signs of the times are fulfilling. Take to them the books that will enlighten them. Daniel and Revelation, the great controversy, patriarchs and prophets, and the desire of ages should now go to the world. The grand instruction contained in Daniel and Revelation has been the means of bringing many precious souls to a knowledge of the truth. Everything that can be done should be done to circulate thoughts on Daniel the Revelation. I know of no other book that can take the place of this one. It is God's helping hand. So she says if we want to enlighten the world, we need to take books to them that will enlighten them. And she says one of those books is Daniel and the Revelation. And she puts it on the same pedestal, brothers and sisters, as she does the great controversy, patriarchs and prophets, and the desire of ages. She says this book is to go to the world. It is a means of bringing precious souls to a knowledge of the truth. And that everything we can do, it, we should to circulate this book. She says, I know of no other book that can take the place of this one. It is God's helping hand. Now, she mentions Daniel and Revelation and thoughts on Daniel and the Revelation. Thoughts on Daniel and the Revelation was the original book. And then Daniel and the Revelation came out about 14 years later in 1897. And it had updated information. Just like the Spirit of Prophecy volume 4 which is called the great controversy came out in 1884 it had 37 chapters but four years later in 1888 Ellen White came out with a new volume that had an additional five chapters which was a total of 42 chapters so the 1884 is great and it has themes in it that the 1888 doesn't have and that was the prophet's doing according to her own words. But the 1888 has an additional five chapters that the 1884 doesn't have. So I tell people, read both editions. So it's the same with Uriah's. 1897, from 1883 to 1897, a lot of things were taking place that were not taking place in 1883. And this quote can be found in 21 Manuscript Release, page 444, 
Paragraph 3. Why this book? The book of Daniel is now unsealed, and the revelation made by Christ to John is to come to all the inhabitants of the earth. By the increase of knowledge, a people is to be prepared to stand in the latter days. Second Selected Messages, page 105, paragraph 1. According to the prophet in previous quotes, or excuse me, let me rephrase that, according to, the, to Christ, through the prophet, because it's the testimony of Jesus, we've been told that this book by Uriah will give us such an understanding of the books of Daniel and Revelation that he compiled together in one book that none need err therein. And when there is an increase of knowledge, a people is prepared to stand in the latter days. Especially what he teaches regarding the signs for the preparation of Christ's coming. He gives specific signs that we will know for certainly, uh, for certainty that Christ is about to finish his ministry in the most holy place. Now, we've been given an exact date when Christ started his ministry in the most holy place and we know from the prophet that after 1844 there is no longer prophetic times to look forward to in the future however although we're not given a date when Christ finishes his ministry in the most holy place in this book by Uriah Smith and in Haskell's book that we learned earlier were to read his writings we will learn what the event is that Christ will finish his work in the most holy place and this was second selected messages page 105 paragraph 1 why this book by Uriah Smith when the books of Daniel and Revelation are better understood believers will have an entirely different religious experience they will be given such glimpses of the open gates of heaven that heart and mind will be impressed with the character that all must develop Testimonies to Ministers, page 114, paragraph 3, and 18 manuscript release, page 24, paragraph 2. So, when we have an understanding of Daniel and the Revelation, God's people are going to have an entirely different religious experience to the point that you're going to see how near heaven really is. Especially on the subject Uriah deals with regarding the coming of Christ. The enemy is seeking to divert the minds of our brethren and sisters from the work of preparing a people to stand in these last days. His sophistries are designed to lead minds away from the perils and duties of the hour. They make of no effect the truth of heavenly origin. Testimonies, Volume 8, page 296, paragraph 2. Brothers and sisters, Satan wants to divert the minds of God's people from the work of preparing to stand in these last days. And we learned it's by having a knowledge of Daniel the Revelation. So what better way for him to work than to convince God's people that they should not read this book by Uriah Smith? Okay? Brothers and sisters, this book is essential for salvation. If you do not read this book, you Christ will come as a thief in the night to you, we're told, by Christ through the prophet. Okay? This book is of heavenly origin, we're told. This book is truth. This book will give us an understanding of the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation like no other book, brothers and sisters. Perilous times are before us. Everyone who has a knowledge of the truth should awake and place himself, body, soul, and spirit under the discipline of God. The enemy is on our track. We must be wide awake on our guard against him. We must put on the whole armor of God. We must follow the directions given through the spirit of prophecy. We must love and obey the truth for this time. This will save us from accepting strong delusions. God has spoken to us through his word. He has spoken to us through the testimonies to the church and through the books that have helped to make plain 
our present duty and the position that we should now occupy. The warnings that have been given line upon line, precept upon precept, should be heeded. If we disregard them, what excuse can we offer? Testimonies, Volume 8, page 298, paragraph 1. And she wrote that in 1905, just ten years before she died, brothers and sisters. She's telling us perilous times are before us. Now I'm here to declare we're in those perilous times. And it's going to get worse and worse. And Satan's on our track. And so how do we get protected? We have to put on the whole armor of God and we have to follow the directions given through the spirit of prophecy. Okay? This is going to keep us from accepting strong delusions as we learned earlier. Brothers and sisters, there are many delusions being taught. Okay? Regarding events leading up to the coming of Christ. But according to Christ through the prophet, Daniel the Revelation will protect us from these delusions coming in. The prophet says, read this book. Now people who are teaching, contrary to Uriah Smith, have an agenda. Well, let, let me take that back, because I don't know anyone's motive, and I apologize for saying that. But they don't want you to read this book of Uriah's. And I will make the claim, it's because Uriah is very clear regarding a particular subject that we'll be talking about in parts two and parts three and I promise you you do not want to miss those parts okay and we've already been told by Christ through the prophet that that book by Uriah Smith makes very plain the prophecies of Daniel and the revela revelation so if we disregard this truth what excuse can we offer? Okay. What about the supposed errors in Uriah's book? Note W. W. Prescott, former president of Battle Creek College, who had from 1903 to 1909 served as editor of the Review and Herald, and was in 1910 carrying leadership responsibilities, and A. G. Daniels, president of the General Conference, having espoused the so-called new view of the identity of the daily of Daniel 8.13, were drawn into heated discussions with advocates of the old view expounded by Uriah Smith in his much-used and fruitful book, Thoughts on Daniel and the Revelation. There was talk of the possible revision of books in which the old view was advocated particularly the widely sold thoughts on Daniel and the Revelation. And that's 10 Manuscript Release, page 49, paragraph 1. And what I'm about to read to you is from 49, paragraph 1, to page 50. Okay? So, Prescott and Daniels wanted to make revisions to Uriah's book. Uriah died in 1902. In his book, he touched heavily on the subject of the daily. He was in agreement with Miller and all of Miller's associates, J Joseph Bates, James White, um, Hiram Edson, J.V. Himes, Apollos Hale, Charles Fitch, Josiah Litch, and so many more regarding the subject of the daily, which we're not going to get into now. Daniels and Prescott believed he was wrong and so they wanted to make changes and take all that information out and revise this book well we're going to learn what the prophet said regarding that okay let's continue on what about the supposed errors in Uriah's book continued in some of our important books that have been in print for years and which have brought many to a knowledge of the truth there may be found matters of minor importance the call for careful study and correction. Let such matters be considered by those regularly appointed to have the oversight of our publications. Let not these brethren, nor our canvassers, nor our ministers, magnify these matters in such a way as to lessen the influence of these good soul-saving books. Should we take up the work of discrediting our literature, 
we would place weapons in the hands of those who have departed from the faith and confuse the minds of those who have newly embraced the message. The less that is done unnecessarily to change our publications, the better it will be. That's 49 paragraph 3. So, remember, the whole change was really about Daniel and the Revelation by Uriah Smith. But she was classifying all of our important books that these revisions should be not made. And if there are minors, matters of minor importance that, you know, there could be mistakes of minor importance, meaning it's not a salvational issue, but that the brethren, the ministers, the canvassers, they are not to magnify these minor mistakes to lessen the influence of these good soul-saving books. And brothers and sisters, that's exactly what's going on right now. People are saying, oh, he's wrong about this little date over here. That's not a salvational date. That's not a historical Adventist date. Oh, he's wrong about this is the wrong word here and this is wrong there. And brothers and sisters, they're wrong to magnify that. Now, they claim regarding verses 36 through 45 that he was wrong. Brothers and sisters, that's leading up to Christ second coming and that's a salvational issue and we're going to see according to the prophet he actually was not wrong brothers and sisters but it's very important that we make sure we have the correct edition the 1897 edition which I will be um, posting and sharing the link because what's happening is if you read the old, the, the most recent editions, like the 1912 and the 1944, okay, the 1912 has removed like 12 major paragraphs, 9 or 12, I forgot which of the two, I had counted them, that is very, very important information, and we're going to see the prophet endorses that information when we get to parts 2 and 3, specifically part 3. And I promise you, you do not want to miss this because it's going to be nothing but quotes and current event articles to show you the very thing Jeriah Smith said was going to happen is happening in our day. So, brothers and sisters, we have to be careful magnifying minor mistakes. Okay? Let's keep going. What about... The supposed errors in Uriah's book continued. Representations have passed before me which indicate that you, A.G. Daniels, and Elder W.W. W. Prescott, and others united with you, have been inclined to search out things to be criticized or condemned in our printed publications. Were encouragement given you, changes and revisions would be made in accordance with the ideas that you have in mind. But you must never forget that Satan, disguised as an angel of light, is always ready to encourage anything that would lead to a loss of confidence in our denominational literature. He would be pleased to keep many minds employed in picking flaws in publications that God has blessed. 10 Manuscript Release, page 49, paragraph 5. And remember, God has blessed through the prophet has told us that this book by Uriah Smith is extremely important and every one of us is to read it. Okay? And this is Satan's work to do this, to make these revisions. And we're going to find out revisions were made. And if you notice, at the end of each of these slides, these last couple slides, this was written in 1910. So his 1897 edition was not to be changed. What about the supposed errors in Uriah's book? Continued. The enemy of all truth well knows that if minds can be kept occupied in searching for and giving wide publicity to imperfections in books that have been printed and widely circulated, great weakness will be brought to our work. There would be created in the minds of many an uncertainty as to the value of our publications that have done a good work and many minds would become absorbed in a further search for possible errors in our literature. 10 Manuscript Release, page 49, paragraph 6. And that's exactly what has happened. 
and so Satan is causing people's minds to be occupied in looking for imperfections in all of our books brothers and sisters there is a danger in that and what he's done is he's created an uncertainty into the minds of many I shouldn't read this book from Uriah Smith I shouldn't read Ellen White's writings brothers and sisters I have seen the supposed changes in the writings of the prophet and in a whole book like desire of ages there's one change that's not correct okay but do we throw out the entire book absolutely not and if we study and know our messages we need not fear to be deceived okay and that was 10 manuscript release page 49 paragraph 6 the result would be the creation of a feeling of uncertainty in the minds of many as to the value of our denominational literature in general 10 manuscript release page 49 paragraph 7 what about the supposed errors in Uriah's book continued I have been instructed that the Lord is not the author of the proposal to make many changes in books already published if information regarding this sort of work even as regards the few instances where revisions are needed should become widespread seeds of doubt would spring up in many minds Satan would be busy at work in planting seeds of distrust and unbelief and it would require much labor to remedy the evil that would be wrought 10 manuscript release page 50 paragraph 1 now some might say well if this book is endorsed by God okay through the prophet how could there be minor mistakes in it well Uriah Smith was a human and he was he was not a prophet and he was not taken off in vision and so humans make mistakes okay so you're not going to find a perfect book of any of our writers they all made some type of minor mistake okay but according to the prophet even if there's a minor mistake that needs revision you're not to revise it no do not make new books so the 1912 and the 1944 and the 1944 edition has over 10,000 errors because of so many omissions and additions that Uriah did not write and let me give you an example in the 1944 it talks about World War one it talks about World War two it talks about inventions that had come out that were not around in Uriah's day okay I don't have any problem about learning about World War one and two but don't put it in Uriah's book and say that this is from Uriah Smith when Uriah died in 1902 and was not around when World War one and World War two took place if you want people to know that make a new book with a new title by a new name of a new author don't be deceitful and make it appear because you've taken out so much information so now you're replacing it and adding all this additional stuff that wasn't even happening in the days of Uriah to make it look like it's still a thick book brothers and sisters that's a deception and that's exactly what has happened in 1944 so between the omissions and additions there's over 10,000 errors in that book and when I read that book it was so confusing and it used words that was very hard for me to understand and when you read Uriah's correct edition brothers and sisters it's so simple to understand um, it's not complicated now let me read to you a quote from the testimony of Jesus remember it's Christ's words speaking through the prophet okay um, it says a brother asked sister white do you think we must understand the truth for ourselves why can we not take the truths that others have gathered together and believe them because they have investigated the subjects and then we shall be free to go on without the taxing of the powers of the mind in the investigation of all these subjects 
do you not think that these men who have brought out the truth in the past were inspired of god i dare not say they were not led of god for christ leads into all truth but when it comes to inspiration in the fullest sense of the word i answer no i believe that god has given them a work to do but if they're not fully consecrated to god at all times they can weave will we self and their peculiar traits of character into what they are doing and will put their mold upon the work it is dangerous for us to make flesh our arm we should lean upon the arm of infinite power god has been revealing this to us for years we must have living faith in our hearts and reach out for larger knowledge and more advanced light so according to the prophet even though entire books have been written for us by these pioneers we are to study for ourselves because none of these pioneers were infallible okay so however uriah smith's book daniel revelation has what's called minor mistakes and it's not all these supposed verses that many claim the end well brothers and sisters we've come to the conclusion of part one of our powerpoint presentation please be sure to uh, watch and listen to parts two and three if you have any questions or comments regarding what we have gone over today you may send them to the email address cbiblical at yahoo.com that's the letter C for Christine and then biblical b-i-b-l-i-c-a-l at yahoo.com if you would like to send for a copy of the correct 1897 edition of Uriah's book you may do so by sending a $50 check or money order to the following address please let them know you are a part of the group that is supposed to get the discount the address is his publishing vine 1945 southwest that's s and w for southwest biltmore street b i l t m o r e street in port port st lucie that's three separate words p o r t and then s t period and then lucy is l u c i e that's in florida three four nine eight four p s the eighteen ninety seven edition that's found on the c d rom is not the correct eighteen ninety seven but the nineteen twelve and in order to see the proof of this just go to Daniel and the Revelation, page uh, 316, paragraph 2, in the Pioneer section of the E.G. White CD-ROM. And so when you go to the L.N.G. White CD-ROM, click the Pioneer section, then click the large binoculars on the top left, and a large query box, query box will come up. Type in their quotation marks, and then DAR for Daniel and Revelation and then a space 316.2 or 316 DAR space 316 and then hit enter it'll bring you up to the page and look for paragraph 2 in that paragraph you will see that 1908 is mentioned how can this be the 1897 edition the correct edition if 1908 is mentioned and on the cd-rom they have removed about 9 to 12 of the paragraphs that i was referring to that are very important that are found both in thoughts on daniel and revelation and his updated version daniel and the revelation so the link that you were given at the beginning of this presentation that is the correct link to read online so until we meet again may the good lord bless and keep each and every one of you have a blessed day bye bye